We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the deviants. The Eternals, a race of immortal beings with superhuman powers who have secretly lived on Earth for thousands of years, reunite to battle the evil deviants. We need to find the others. All right, so let's talk about this. Uh, <laughs> the The Eternals is, uh, it came out on Friday. I saw it on Saturday. If you guys watch my short, which you can check it out up here if you haven't seen that yet, but I did, I did a little short, quick review on this movie. And just, I really just talked about some of the things that, you know, were a first for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that was kind of cool. But today I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, which includes some of those things. And I feel like if you're watching this, you're watching this to one, see if you want to watch the movie for one. You've seen the Rotten Tomato scores. You've seen the critic reviews, all that kind of stuff. This is more just from an every man type uh, re reviewer. I'm just like you, even though, yes, I have watched all the movies. I read some of the comics. I've never read a, an Eternals comic book um, as far as their stories and things of that nature. But I kind of want to just give this to you as a blueprint of if it's something you want to see. I'm not going to tell you if you should see this or not, because you have to make that decision for yourself and decide if you like it or not. <laughs> it's up to you. You might enjoy this, uh, but I just want to kind of give you more or less a blueprint of what I experienced, what I thought, and kind of where it lies within the MCU experience. So first the good, I'm going to kind of just roll through these because it's not a whole lot for me. I didn't really care for this film. If you saw my short, you already know that. But I will say the first good is uh, the tone. The tone is great in this one. It doesn't feel anything like an MCU film. It feels more like just a dramatic film that happens to have superhuman characters in there. The tone is great. Uh, you don't have a lot of those Marvel quips as far as the humor and things of that nature. Um, so it does feel a little more natural from that aspect, even though the story is very cosmic. Uh, so that I really enjoyed. Two would be the cinematography. Uh, the film is actually pretty beautiful when it has a lot of the landscape shots. It does get dreary towards the end because they're on an island that has a volcano. So it's really gray and black and, you know, kind of that stuff. But but uh, most of the shots in this film are rather beautiful. And so that I really enjoyed, especially just the, again, the landscapes, some of the cosmic shots are really great. And this one just has this really big grand feel. So that I did really enjoy. Three would be the two end credit scenes. They're good here. They're not great. They're not huge like a lot of people were kind of pushing them, except for one. The second one is better than the first one. There's a, there's a mid credit scene. Then there's an end credit scene. So the very end of the credits, you have another scene. Uh, and that one's better for me because it, it there's still a lot of questions, but uh, it introduces a character that I think is going to be awesome. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to go into too much because I don't want to spoil anything here. This is non-spoiler. But if you've seen them on YouTube, you've probably seen that. You've seen other people talk about it in their videos uh, as far as spoilers and things of that nature. Then you probably already know. I'm not going to do that here. But the two end credit scenes are fun. Are they worthy of going to see this movie? Like, do you go see this movie to see the end credit scenes? No, I wouldn't say that you would, but they are still fun. And I think the end credit scenes may get more discussion than the actual movie itself, just because of what can come next. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. So now we're at the bad. Uh, when it comes to the bad, this is probably most of the video. Uh, the movie overall is slow and boring for me. The, the, the action is okay. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. I think Makari gets some of the best action scenes and Angelina Jolie's Thena gets some of the best action scenes. Outside of that, really nothing much to get hype about when it comes to the action. I felt like it was just more of the same. Icarus, who is the Superman of this universe, <laughs> and they actually name drop Batman and Superman in this movie, which is just, it was weird, but he feels very much like Superman. He does a lot of things in this that are just Superman-esque. So it's it's something we've seen before, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. But outside of that, it's just a boring movie. Even though all the characters have different powers that kind of set them apart, they're all essentially the same character. <laughs> Some of them have different motivations, but their motivations get a little clouded at a certain point in the movie, which is a nice twist that does happen. So if you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about or if you've already seen it. But all the characters overall feel very much the same. They're all confused. They're all a little bit bewildered. Um, they don't really know their purpose as much uh, as far as the mission that they're there on Earth to do but they all feel very much the same. They all want to be together as a family. They don't want to be separate. And they're trying to find each other uh, throughout the movie to, to get back together and, and eventually, again, fight the deviants because that's what their mission is to do, or so they thought. Another thing that doesn't help the film is its lack of humor. Uh, there are jokes in the movie. Kingo, played by Kamal Nanjiani, he's, he's the... He's a comic relief, but it's not very good here. Uh, and he's a funny guy. Don't get me wrong. He's hilarious. Uh, but here he's just kind of... Eh, it just falls flat. All the humor falls flat, similar to Doctor Strange. The first Doctor Strange movie had humor spread throughout, but it didn't really land all that well. So this one, none of it really landed for me. Last thing that's bad for me, and I think this, this is more a bad decision for Marvel on their part. This movie should have been a Disney Plus show. 
there's so much information that's being thrown at you that it can be a little overwhelming for, you know, either newer viewers or viewers that haven't watched Guardians of the Galaxy, don't know anything about Celestials, things of that nature. Um, it's a lot of information. I think it actually would have been much better if they took all this content and made it into a Disney Plus show. Give it one, give it two seasons, whatever the case. That would have been a much better scenario here. One, it would have helped us to connect to the characters more because as far as the one ugly that I have here is that the characters mean nothing to me. And for, <laughs> for some people, that might be the case. Similar to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, the first one, Everybody could have died in that movie. I wouldn't have cared as much except for Rocket and Groot. I feel like the second film helped you to connect to the characters even more. And you're also gaining a deeper understanding of some of their background, what they're all about, and their feelings on just life. In this film, these are Eternals. They're not humans. They live for thousands of years. There's more background on that you get in the movie. But at no point did I feel connected to the characters. Cersei, played by Gamma Chan, who is in her second MCU film. She was in Captain Marvel as well. Uh, we're supposed to connect to her more because she's more or less the audience in this film. We learn everything through her, which I think was an okay way to do that. I was hoping the audience character would be Dane Whitman, played by Kit Harington from Game of Thrones. He's cool in this, but he's barely in the movie. But I was hoping that he would be more of the audience character. We would learn everything more or less through him. That would have been cool. But that for me was one of the biggest issues with this movie. I didn't connect to any of the characters. The stakes of the film didn't really matter to me because I know what movies are coming next. This movie is post blip. So we kind of have an idea of where it falls within the cinematic universe. But with all the high stakes, it was hard for me to really connect to what they were trying to prevent as far as, you know, the world ending, which at this point, we've had so many scenarios like that in the MCU that it feels more like a been there, done that type scenario. Now <laughs> I'm getting to a place where I'm like, at this point, you should just destroy the world. Nothing feels really high stakes much. What if kind of show that they could bring any character back at any point if they wanted to? And I feel like they're going to try to do some of that in the live action MCU at some point. So it's really hard to connect to some of these high stake moments and feel like, well, it really doesn't matter. Everything's going to be okay in the end. The good guy's going to win. This is kind of how it goes. In my short, I did talk about how this is the most DC film that Marvel has made. And I say DC because I feel like DC asks the audience uh, more internal questions regarding uh, a superhuman person's place in the world and things of that nature and like kind of what their job should be and should we have control over what they can and can't do. DC does that a lot. In this film, it brings up some of those questions, but then it fails to really dive deep into answering those questions. This is gonna be a little bit spoilery here for a moment, but uh, so if you don't wanna hear anything about, you know, little tidbits, it's not gonna go deep, but you can get out of here real quick. Okay, I gave you enough time. So the emergence in this film is pretty much helping to create another celestial being, okay? And in order to create another celestial being uh, from a planet, they need a certain amount of humans or life on that planet. So Thanos' snap prevented the Celestials from uh, creating another emergence on Earth. So my first thought was if they have to protect humanity from the Deviants to preserve life so that there's enough life to power the emergence on Earth, why didn't they fight Thanos who did the snap and took half of all life away? And they don't answer that. They still didn't answer that. It was even asked to them. Like, hey, when Thanos was here, why didn't you help fight Thanos? What was up? And they're like, well, we were told we can only do it when Deviants are involved. But his actions still prevented the emergence from happening, which is what you're trying to help happen. It, it was just, it was really sloppy. Not focused at all when it came to that. And they couldn't really answer it. So I feel like that was the biggest question they had to answer and they had to make it make sense in order for <laughs> everything else to really kind of flow the way that it flows. Didn't really work for me. Now, my biggest issue with this film, and this is probably under the ugly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you would call that. I don't know, disgusting, I don't know. But my biggest issue is this. The movie really glosses over some really big moments uh, in history. It talks about Hiroshima, so the atomic bomb that was uh, dropped on Hiroshima and destroying that city. And it uses Fastos because he's a text expert uh, of the Eternals to kind of show his disgust with humanity and how his technology, him helping humanity with their technology led to this and it led to war and it led to destruction and things of that nature. And he's crying over it. But at no point did they talk about, uh, you know, uh, slavery, uh, his thoughts, or maybe even Makari's thoughts on slavery, uh, the Holocaust, like none of that is ever brought up. And so it was weird that you bring up all these pieces of how, you know, they're feeling defeated. They're feeling like humanity isn't doing what, what they thought they should do because they, they humanity could do so much and we're just helping to push them along a little bit. But there's all this infighting within humanity. There's all this power hungriness that goes on and, and this destruction and they don't deserve it. 
but they never talk about, you know, the impact of slavery or the impact of the Holocaust. One person, you know, being, being the leader of this, this German army that is destroying lives in this, in this area that, that never comes up at any point. And so they were really picky. They were cherry picking with what they wanted to actually really go into uh, and what they didn't want to really touch, which I thought was very interesting. And uh, I would have liked to have seen some sort of discussion on that when it comes to slavery or the Holocaust or, the, or any, you know, there's so many other areas where they can kind of go. Um, but especially with the black character, <laughs> uh, which I thought was like, okay, that's a little bit, a little bit odd, but that's just my take. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on this film. I got some of you guys' thoughts when it comes to the short that I did. Uh, some of you guys love the film. Some of you guys really enjoy it. Other people will feel similar to me or in the middle. Uh, I think it's the most divisive MCU film to date so far. Uh, and for, for good reason, but I personally just don't think it's very good. It wasn't very well executed as far as what they were trying to do here. Uh, it should have been a TV show. I think that would have been much better. They can be a little bit more risque in that aspect too, but this is what we got. Again, in the comments below, let me know what you think of the film. If you've seen it, if you have any questions about it, if you have questions based on what I've said, let me know. Let's talk about it. I, I'm interested in where everybody kind of sits on this film. To you guys, the subscribers, the members, the watchers, thanks to you guys for your continued support on the channel. I really appreciate you all. To my hyper crew, verbal shout out for you guys, Brian Tidwell, Steve O, Slepnir, Dash Milner, K6013, Daniel Lopez, Portal on Mobile 44, Kratos, William Cooper, Shane Cook, and Richie Chester. Thanks so much for choosing that top tier crew. I really appreciate you guys. If you're still here, hit that like button if you haven't done so yet. Helps the channel in a big way. Also hit that subscribe button. Helps us continue to grow as a channel. So I really appreciate it if you could hit that button. Goes from red to gray so you won't miss out on any more content. Also check out some of the content from the creators we've got in the description below. They got some great content. I think you'd enjoy it. You can also check out some of the most popular videos on this channel or the most recent reaction as well all over there. If you've seen all that, I'll see you guys in the comments. We can talk more about this. Otherwise, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.